Malocclusion is a clinical implication that results from the damage of the mandible. Hello guys, welcome back to my YouTube channel. In this video, we'll simply be looking at the bones of the skull and clinical implication that results or that is associated with the damage to these bones of the skull and also its articulation. The skull. The skull is a bony structure that provides support to the brain the meninges and the cerebral vasculature. The skull bones are actually many and they are formed through an intramembranous ossification. So the bones of the skull are grouped into two. We have the cranium and also the facial skeleton. The cranium, also known as the neurocranium, is grouped into two. We have the cranial roof and the cranial base. Let's talk about the cranial roof. The cranial roof is also known as the cavaria. It is made up of the frontal bone, the two parietal bones, and the occipital bone. They are joined together through suture. And suture is a fibroid joint that is very unique to the skull. Now let's talk about the cranial base. The cranial base actually is formed by six bones. It includes the frontal bone, the occipital bone, the temporal bone, the ethmoid bone, and they articulate with the first cervical vertebra known as the atlas. And they also articulate with the facial skeleton and as well as with the mandibular, with the mandible. Now, let's talk about the clinical implication that is associated with the damage of the skull, which is what the cranial fracture. The cranial fracture could result from, you know, collusion or heavy trauma to the skull. So they, in the skull, there's an important landmark in the skull known as the tyrion. So tyrion is a H-shaped junction where the frontal bone, the parietal bone, the temporal bone, and the ethmoid and the sphenoid bone come together. Okay, so this tyrion overlies an important artery known as the middle meningeal artery and damage to this artery when this artery becomes damaged it will lead to blood being accumulated between the skull and the dura mater which is known as the estradura hematoma now let's move to the facial skeleton the facial skeleton actually is you know it provides support to the tissues of the face the facial skeleton is made up of 14 bones and this bone articulate to give support to the eye, which is the eye orbit, the nasal cavity, and the oral cavity. So the frontal bone, remember we said is the bone of the calvaria, though sometimes it is also included as the bones of the facial skeleton. So let's now talk about these bones of the facial skeleton. The first one is the zygomatic bone. The zygomatic bone is also known as the cheek bone. They are two in number. They articulate with the frontal bone, the maxilla, the temporal bone, and the parietal bone. The next one that we'll be talking about is the nasal bone. The nasal bone are actually two in number two. They are sl two slender bones that is located at the medial wall of the nasal cavity. The next bone is the lacrimal bone, which is two. It's the smallest bone of the facial skeleton, which is located at the face. So the next bone that we will be talking about, maxilla. The maxilla is also two in number. They form the heart palate. The next bone is the vomer. The vomer is located, is the rare bone that is located as a rare part of the nasal cavity. It's a single bone. Then the next one is the palatine bone. The palatine bone is located at the rare part of the oral cavity they fuse together to form the heart palate too so let's now talk about the clinical implication that is associated with the facial skeleton the clinical implication is simply the facial fracture and there are four common facial fracture that we'll be talking about the most common among the four is the nasal fracture the nasal fracture is due to the damage of the nasal bone and it is the most common reason being that it, due to the prominence of the nasal bones the nasal bone is actually very prominent so once there is a little damage or the little fracture 
in the fetal skeleton, it will lead to the damage of the nasal bone. And its clinical presentation is bleeding of the nose. Okay, so that is the clinical presentation of the NASA uh, of the NASA fracture. The next one is the fracture of the maxilla. The fracture of the maxilla is not that common. Reason being that the maxilla is well articulated, but a situation whereby there is a heavy trauma, it will lead to the damage of the maxilla. And the fracture of the maxilla can be grouped, can be classified into using Lefort classification into three types. The next classification, the next fracture is the fracture of the zygomatic bone. The zygomatic fracture, when there is a damage to the zygomatic bone, this can also result to damage of a nerve that is very close to the zygomatic bone, known as the infraorbital nerve. Once there is a damage to this infraorbital nerve, it will lead to the paralysis of the cheek because this bone, this nerve supplies the cheek. All right. So the next one is malocclusion. Okay. Malocclusion results from the damage of the mandible and it is simply the misalignment of the teeth. So moving forward, let's now just talk about suture. Suture, like we said, is a fibrous joint that is very unique. It is very unique to the skull. It is immovable and it completely fused at the age of 20. In neonates, this suture is not well properly fused. So it gives an important membranous part known as the fontanelles. We have the anterior, uh, we have the frontal fontanelles and the occipital fontanelles. The frontal fontanelles is located between the coronal suture and the sagittal suture. And the frontal, when posterior occipital fontanelle is located between the um, lambdoid suture and the parietal uh, and the sagittal suture. All right. So for the sutures. There are actually three major sutures in this core. We have the coronal suture, the sagittal suture, and the lambdoid suture. The coronal suture is simply the suture that, you know, it, is, it joins the frontal bone and the two parietal bones together. Whereas the sagittal suture joins the two parietal bones together. The lambdoid suture is just the suture that joins the occipital bone and the two parietal bones together. Thank you so much, guys, for your time. Thank you so much for listening to this video, for watching this video, for paying attention to this video, because I'm not the only one on YouTube, but you find it well to, you know, watch this video. Thank you so much. I really appreciate it. Please share this video, hit the like button, and subscribe. Please subscribe, subscribe, subscribe. Thank you so much. Please remain peaceful, remain focused, you know, don't look for trouble, don't look for anybody's trouble, you know, just be peaceful and um, do the right thing always, because it pays to do the right thing always. God got you. God bless you. Peace.